the two of us, you know, it, it came time to decide where, where do our characters want to sit. And we said, well, let's put them on, you know, the two-piece kind of couch together mm -hmm. and just figuring out the way that we would sit <laughs> over the course of this, you know, 15, 20 minutes that sort of plays out, figuring out that kind of physical dynamic was so much fun. Were either of you familiar with Kindred the novel when you first went in for this role? And what stood out to you most about the script's interpretation of the story? Familiar, yes, but not in the way that you read something once and you, you um, it, it affects you. But this, you know, when you when you're living and breathing a, a characters a characters like we were, you you want to dive a little bit deeper. So um, you read it again and you you take your notes, you highlight, and you kind of take what you need to from it and we were fortunate enough in this case it was almost a bit of a an embarrassment of riches to have the book as a um a resource but then to have brandon who so wonderfully beautifully channeled octavia's work um into a sort of a you know a eight hours of captivating television to have that too and his dialogue it was so I was just saying this in another interview, so easy to learn. And that for me is always a, uh, a catch point. If, mm. if, I can, if I can learn a lot of dialogue in a, in a short amount of time, it's usually saying that that character is sort of, sort of speaking through me. And Brandon has such a beautiful lyrical prose to him. Um, um, it was a, a true treat. Gail, for you, um, I have to say, aside from, you know, like, who your characters are in your position in society, uh, the Wayland uh, home does not seem like a very happy one. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> really? <laughs> how, how is Margaret feeling about her respective position in this household with the husband that she has and mm. his relationship with the son? I think she's feeling um, really in, unstable. She's, she's quite an unhinged, unstable, unmoored woman. Um, and she reacts as such, you know, um, kind of, yeah, she's, she's, she's kind of at the, at a loss. You, you meet her at different, obviously different stages of her life and relationship to how much she's absorbed and, you know, they've, they've gone through together as a couple and as a family. And it's interesting where we leave her, leave her at the end of the season, you know, um, where she, where she gets to, where she's pushed to. And Ryan, on the flip side of that, um, while the way that the Waylands and especially Thomas treats, uh, the slaves is obviously unconscionable and, you know, evil. Uh, it's interesting that Rufus mentions like, oh, well, he doesn't treat me that much better. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, he treats his family like property to a degree as well and not property that he likes very much. Uh, what is his deal? You know, I think he has more of an affinity towards the property, towards the plantation itself as a piece of land than he does to its inhabitants, including his family. Um, and that's a bit of a sorry state of affairs. And that stems from a man that's uh, too prideful to see the error of his ways. You know, his own righteousness is getting in his way. And he's about as flawed an individual as they come, but he's putting up a brave front. For, for society's sake, you know, and even for his son's sake, he still has to believe that his son is capable of carrying on this legacy that he's so vehemently uh, building. Mm. Um, and he can't help but sort of feel Margaret is etching away at this legacy in not a good way. So it sort of promotes a lot of uh, in-family fighting. And then you've got the addition of this enigma that is Dana, that is also throwing a, a spanner into the works. Mm -hmm. So Tom's Tom's like a wrecking ball. Gail, uh, so I loved Sheila in Glow, and while I wish that it was still with us, I'm glad <laughs> we get to see you in Kindred. <laughs> but what uh, spoke to you about this role? Because it's, you know, like, I didn't recognize you at first. You're so different, and you totally, and you know, lose yourself <laughs> in it. Uh, <laughs> that's good, yeah. I kind of think that's my, like, calling card, I think. I... I don't like to, I just, I, I'm just responding to, um, the material, um, to the character. I don't think there's any kind of like through line or anything to like the, the choices that I, you know, I'm presented with cause I'm so lucky to get to do this. You know, this isn't, you know, uh, it's such a privilege, especially as kind of a project. So I was excited to transform and, you know, we both like look really different in the show and I bleached my eyebrows, you know, <laughs> 
It was great. You did so much more than that. <laughs> it was amazing. It was really amazing to act with her. You know, we had, there was so much fun to be had in between the, the dialogue. There's this great scene where Kevin is teaching our son Rufus how to sort of play piano and Rufus is giving this sort of performance for the first time. And mm. so the two of us, you know, it, it came time to decide where, where do our characters want to sit. And we said, well, let's put them on, you know, the two-piece kind of couch together mm -hmm. and just figuring out the way that we would sit <laughs> over the course of this, you know, 15, 20 minutes that sort of plays out, figuring out that kind of physical dynamic was so much fun. Yeah. She's like a um, physical kind of extraordinaire too. Just you, you, your face is just, if there's eight people on screen, your face is just, your eyes are just naturally drawn towards Gail. She just has like that, whatever it is, I the feel, X factor. I feel the same way about him. You know, we just, Aww. it's fun to find a good partner and, you know, and, and work with an actor that you're like, oh, it's really nice to not feel that way. Like we have such a different dynamic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is really nice. Thankfully. <laughs> um, uh, now, Obviously, uh, being trapped in a time that you have no way to get out of, where you're treated uh, very poorly, is not anyone's idea of a good time. But if you guys could, for educational purposes, see firsthand another time period or place, what would that be? Maybe it would scare me, but in some ways I would like to have a glimpse of the future, you know? Mm -hmm. The future. Okay. I'm just going to keep it a little general because I have a lot of fear. <laughs> A lot of fear about it and a lot of worry, but hope too. I think that that comes from a place of hope, you know. Uh, yeah, probably seventies for me. The the kind of the, a bit of a musical revolution. I love it. Well, thank you both so much. Um, I had a great uh, time watching Kindred, and I cannot wait for more seasons. Thank you. Thank so much. you. Yeah, us too. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Have a great day. Bye. Bye.